Hey guys, happy Wet Wednesday. So guess what? We're going to talk about nematodes today. More specifically, plant parasitic nematodes. Um, nematodes are worm-like in appearance, but they're actually quite different than, uh, in taxonomically speaking, than what you're used to seeing. So several hundred species of nematodes feed on plants and cause hundreds and hundreds of diseases uh, globally. And just like humans, uh, plant parasitic nematodes enjoy their vegetables, <laughs> which causes agricultural production a loss of approximately $80 billion every year. So in the, in the following uh, video, we're going to talk about some symptoms that nematodes cause on plants, some control measures for nematodes, and we're going to highlight a few nematodes uh, that are pretty popular and that we get quite a bit in the lab. So enjoy the information. Here is a picture of a nematode. They're small, usually 300 to 1,000 micrometers, which makes them invisible to the naked eye and most of them have a stylet or spear that they use to puncture holes in plant cells and withdraw nutrients. Almost all plant parasitic nematodes live part of their lives in the soil, so things like soil temp, aeration, and moisture affect their survival and movement in the soil. For instance, nematodes move faster when there's more moisture in the soil. Even though nematodes can infect a, quite a large variety of plants, the most common or the most economically important include tomatoes, peanuts, beans, potatoes, citrus, rice, corn, soybean, cotton, tobacco, wheat, and other cereals, sugar beets, and other vegetables. The symptoms that occur on the roots include root knots, root galls, root lesions, excessive root branching, injured root tip, and root rot. These root symptoms are usually accompanied by non-characteristic symptoms on above-ground plant parts, such as reduced growth, yellowing, excessive wilting, reduced yields, and poor quality of products. The root knot nematode is extremely common, and it causes galls or knots, as seen on the roots in these pictures. Cyst nematodes are also quite common, and they are characterized by the presence of cysts on roots and proliferation of roots and production of shallow, bushy root systems, as seen here on the picture. Lesion nematodes reduce and inhibit root development by forming local lesions on young roots. This causes stunted roots and chlorotic spots. Another important nematode is the stubby root nematode that devitalizes root tips and stops their growth, causing reduction of root systems, severe stunting, chlorosis, and reduced crop yield. Control measures include crop rotation, planting resistant varieties, physical means such as heat and flooding, and chemical means like nematicides. We hope that you found all of this information super helpful. And remember, if you do send soil into the lab, the only thing we can do with it is a nematode detection assay. And even though winter is upon us, um, you won't be able to worm your way out of getting these little guys.